Thank you for joining us. We've got an amazing show for you tonight. We've got uh, in-house Kelly Doty. We've got Guy Aitchison with a preview of his bio encyclopedia. Uh, we'll be Skyping with Marcus Leonard from Berlin and Gunnar from Red Tree Gallery. And we'll, uh, we'll all talk about the tattoos of the day. It's going to be uh, a good time. This show is brought to you by TattooNow.com, um, the Paradise Tattoo Gathering, and uh, the Paradise Artist Retreat. Check those things out at TattooNow.com. Um, some amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, if you're curious about our last episode, we had Tim Senegal with us. Uh, we did a great interview, talked about a lot of tattoos and things. We'll be talking with Kelly Doty about what she's been up to since she left off the map, uh, what's new down with, in Atlanta with her, and uh, it should be a great time. Stick around with us. It's going to be a really good show, one of the best. Hopefully, we'll go out of this year with a bang and not burn anything up this time. So stick with us. We'll be back soon with Kelly Doty. We're back. Um, if you guys want to get in touch with us here, you can email us, uh, tattoonow at tattoonow.com. If you've got any questions for Kelly or any of our Skypers tonight, you can send them in, and I'll get them right here, and we'll be able to answer them, hopefully. Uh, Kelly will have all kinds of insight for you, I'm sure. I'm an insightful individual. So, Kelly, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You uh, happy to be back in the Northeast for a little visit? I am exceedingly happy to be back in the Northeast. I, I'm a complete dork for the Northeast. I can't answer you why, but it's it's so Christmas. It's like Christmas out the ass everywhere, and it's awesome. It's so, so happy. So uh, weather-wise, it hasn't isn't probably a lot better down south though. It's it's honestly it's delightful down south. It that's that would be the overwhelming theme of the South is how incredibly delightful everything is uh it was 73 degrees when i walked out the door the other day and i while i know that's lovely i also find it unacceptable for mid-december i can understand uh, that yeah it's it's tremendous down south so we'll just jump right into this um where'd you grow up i grew up in burlington connecticut um it's a really small lovely town in in uh, western connecticut um, grew up there, lived in Connecticut pretty much my whole life until I moved up here. How long have you been tattooing? I've been tattooing for like five years now, which is strange to say because I always, I always feel like it's, it's so little, but now I'm, I'm saying like five years and that's half of 10 years. Um, and so that, uh, is exciting and scary. Um, which is weird. Five years is a good block. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not divisible by three. I mean, when I get up to six years, I'll be a lot happier. But you know, it's it's a good transitional year, I suppose. So where did you get your start tattooing? 
Um, I started tattooing at Turnpike Tattoo in uh, Meriden, Connecticut. It's on the Berlin Turnpike, so you can see where the clever name came from. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Marketing genius. Yeah. Um, but I started a uh, uh, Turnpike Tattoo um, as well. I think Gunner uh, started there as well. But uh, um, I was apprenticed with uh, uh, Kanaya Tim. He works at Nautilus Tattoo in Newington, Connecticut now. What uh, what first drew you to tattooing? Were you always an artistic person? Yeah, my my family gave up a long time ago um, on me with any up uh, any other aspirations. Like I think I was five, and they were probably like, "Oh, she's not going to be a doctor." Um, <laughs> but I drew pictures real good, um, so they they really encouraged that. Um, which is which is wonderful, but yeah, I, I've been drawing pretty consistently my whole life. There was there was never any other option but to do something in in the art field, and then uh, when when I got into like middle school, you know, around like age like twelve or thirteen, I started getting really into body modification. Um, so I was really really into like piercings and tattoos and implants and you know tongue splitting and, and all of that. And it just seemed like the natural thing, like, oh, I love to draw and I, you know, I've been doing it my whole life. Why not, you know, merge body modification and, and drawing and tattoo? So what was your first step in tattooing? How did you, how did you come to have your first machine and start that first tattoo? Uh, uh, I failed mostly. Uh, a series of uh, failures is how I got to tattooing because I wanted to tattoo so bad and when I got out of um, art school I immediately started trying to trying to um, find an apprenticeship but I'm really really shy and I'm awkward with my words and I talk about bodily fluids constantly and I can't <laughs> stop myself so I um, I wasn't having any luck finding an apprenticeship and Finally, I was I was getting tattooed at, at Turnpike, and one of the guys there saw my um, my sketchbook, and I got a call a week week or two later in an interview for an apprenticeship. So I really I just uh, blindly stumbled into that through through dumb luck, thankfully. Uh, what was the first tattoo that you were put on someone, and was it yourself or was it another person? No, it was not on myself. Um, it was actually a, uh, a rose on, like, uh, my, my lifelong friend, um, and it was done with, like, the tightest three-liner ever, so, uh, it, it looked horrible. It honestly, it had a really Helen Keller vibe to it, um, but I, I fixed it up years later. So you, you remedied, remedied it. Yeah. You made amends with a bad tattoo. I sure did. Sorry, Helen Kelly. So, do you have any bad tattoos yourself that you I'm got in the early in days? Them. <laughs> I'm covered in them. They're everywhere. I have really good tattoos too that I like to keep hidden. Um, but my uh, my bad tattoos happen mostly when I was like 18 or 19. So I decided that they should be, you know, on my forearms. Put them right for out there everyone for to everyone see. to see. Them. Yeah. So you're in the process of lasering some of that off, and yep, they've it's been lasered quite a few times, but I've been a real lazy piece of crap about getting them lasered anymore. Um, you got plans? I have no excuses. Do you have, do you have plans for uh, any specific artists to do anything? Not really. Just um, preparing an empty canvas for the future. Pretty much, and I think I think that's nice because there's so many great artists that keep popping up every every year. Like you know, every few months you see another artist that you're like, oh my god, they're awesome. So I don't want to necessarily you know divide my entire body and you know section it off to this artist and this artist just now. Right. Like I've got years of finding great artists ahead of me. So. Speaking of great artists, who are some of the artists that have influenced you? Oh. Um, Nick Baxter is probably one of my one of my biggest influences. Um, there's, it's not necessarily subject matter, although I do appreciate that every every so often you'll find a tattoo that he does that has kind of like a little wink in it because he uh, he is a funny guy. Um, to say the least. 
Yeah, he's he, so there's a there's a few tattoos that you find a little bit of humor in, but mostly it's his uh, composition and the fact that he he plays around so much with uh, background, middle ground, and foreground, and I think that's one of the most important parts of a tattoo is to make sure that you're creating depth through your you know the use of background and foreground, and he does a great job at that. To say nothing of, you know, his color choices and his color blending. He's not using colors that everyone else is using, you know. I feel like you see um, Eternals, uh, like, turquoise and teal in, in a lot of tattoos because it's a delightful color. But, right. like, you're like, oh, there it is. And his colors are, you know, one of a kind. They're made through a process of layering that, you know, you don't find in a lot of other people's tattoos. Yeah, he makes some really amazing, amazing tattoos, that's for sure. Yeah. Other than uh, other than Mr. Baxter, who else have you who do you look to for inspiration? And uh, Russ Abbott, uh, who you're working with now. Who I'm working with now. It's gonna be pretty amazing, huh? It's <laughs> really surreal to say that I work with Russ Abbott because uh, I met him at Paradise, um, like the second Paradise, and I was just 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 out of my apprenticeship, and uh, I stood behind him for about twenty minutes, and looked over his shoulder at what he was doing. Uh, and didn't say any words to him, and then he got really creeped out and like looked up at me and was like, what? and I was like, I'm sorry. So um, it's really surreal that I'm working with him now. But um, if if I had to choose like a top, even a top two people from like the entire country that I would want to learn from, it would it would probably be Nick and Russ. And the fact that I get to learn from Russ every day now is absolutely absurd he's a, an encyclopedia of knowledge it's it's almost infuriating <laughs> it sounds like it's a really great experience do you miss off the map at all i have to ask we're we're sitting here and off the map I, I have to ask that question i miss off the map terribly um i never i never specifically wanted to leave off the map it's such a it was such a strange strange transition because i it wasn't like leaving a job because you're unhappy somewhere. It, it was just that I had this opportunity to learn so much from Russ. And I knew that's what I needed at the time. So, you know, I left off the map on, on the best of terms. It's still, it's still my family. Like, I still, you know, want to be here sometimes. But I'm so happy where I am at Ink and Dagger. Like, it's been a, it's been a great transition that way. Have any of your clients followed you? Uh, do, do you? You know, your client base you built up here. To, have they followed you down to the Ink and Dagger shop? Yeah, I have. I have a bunch of clients that have that have come down from here. Um, I have absolutely amazing clients. Uh, I had one that my last client before I left to come home, uh, Winona. I actually started tattooing her here, and she's she's um, from elsewhere on the East Coast. But, you know, she started up here, and now she comes down to Ink and Dagger. I have a few other customers that, you know, traveled here, and now they travel to Ink and Dagger, or people that travel from Massachusetts down to, uh, down to Georgia. I have, I have, honestly, like, the best customers ever. Have you uh, noticed any uh, differences between clientele down there, between up here and down there? Have you had much chance to work with um. Southern folk? Um, I like the term Southern folk. Um, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't had a a buttload of uh, Southern customers as of yet. I, I, it's been probably like an even fifty fifty between people that travel and people that are local to Inca Dagger. But um, I have noticed that the people like when I when I when I go out, which is very rare. Um, are are so nice they're just overwhelmingly kind at you and they want to know how your day was and they don't know me and i get confused and frightened and people will ask how my day has been in like the grocery line and i shirk away from them because i don't understand their angle <laughs> um it's a very northeastern response yeah also um driving i've realized i'm a real asshole um, and I knew I wasn't the gentlest driver anyways, but everyone down there is really just taking their time, you know? They don't, 
They don't have to be anywhere in a hurry. It's the south. It's lovely down there. Enjoy the outside. <laughs> and I don't want to. I don't want to enjoy anything. I just want to go. But <laughs> it, my biggest complaint about the south is that people are too nice and the weather's lovely. Yeah, that's uh, that's oh. not really much of a valid complaint. I don't think that sounds, no. that sounds pretty uh, <laughs> idyllic. No, I'm broken. The South is great, so. <laughs> That's a good way to sum it up. Yeah. So, about your tattooing specifically, how do you try to bring emotions into tattoos, color palette, uh, imagery choices, that kind of thing? Um, when I When I first started doing a lot of, like, goofy things, it was really... I, w I was surprised that people were letting that happen. Because I would, you know, someone would ask for a bird, and I would draw the most idiotic bird ever, and I'd be like, <laughs> and they, somehow they would be like, yeah, that's great. And I'd be like, really? You're going to let me do that? <laughs> okay. Um, but now I'm, I, I'm still surprised when that happens, actually. But, like, I'm, I feel like a lot of the time people, people really want to have something, like, kind of funny on them. And that makes me happy because I feel like later in life you're still going to enjoy something funny. Right. Um, so I really like to bring a lot of a lot of humor in if I like, can. Like the nipples on this cat <laughs> tattoo that we're showing right now. Yeah. That, those are exceptional. That's actually... I can't even take credit for those nipples. God help me. I wish I could. But um, I wasn't... I, I didn't, hadn't thought to put nipples on the cat. And then uh, Russ Abbott... Um, gave me a mini like tutorial in nipple drawing uh like he i have a sheet of paper that just has different nipples and he's amazing. like oh no you gotta put nipples on the cat like of course and like he's showing me you know well you could do this type of nipple or you could do this type of nipple which is great to have that creepy attention to detail it's just such a the whole tattoo is great but those nipples are really just set it off yeah i like to think that um they were i don't know if nipples can be flaccid but if they can like they were they were flaccid before he killed the mouse and then the thrill of murder really no. just aroused very them. excited yeah so we've got a question in from someone on the chat room who uh i don't know who but they want to know if you're still a law and order fan <laughs> oh man wouldn't that be a shot in the ass if I wasn't. Of course I'm still a Law & Order <laughs> fan. I specifically chose Law & Order because I knew that there was nothing that could ever shake me from loving Law & Order. And especially since it was unjustly cancelled a few years ago. God bless it. Um, now nothing can ruin it, really. Dick Wolf can make as many Law & Order LAs as he wants. But nothing's going to mar my memory of Lenny Briscoe and Jack McCoy. <laughs> Someone's going to be very happy that you answered that. Good, good. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap this part of the interview up. And uh, we'll come back and we'll talk with uh, Gunnar and Marcus Leonard. And we'll go over Tattoo of the Day. If people want to join us for that, they can get the app on the Apple App Store. Um, and we'll have a group discussion. We'll talk about tattooing. Uh, where it's going, um, all that kind of stuff. So stick with us. You're going to be with us the whole time. I'll be here. Okay. I don't have anywhere to go. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Tired of scratchy, blown out lines? Are you creatively stagnant? Clients not coming back? Loser? Hey, Richie Bulldog here with something that's going to change the way you tattoo forever. This is TattooEducation.com. It's not a chamois, and it's not a liquid detergent. TattooEducation.com is a revolutionary new networking site for tattoo artists. Its purpose is to present the very best in educational and related materials for the tattoo industry. Everything you need to dramatically improve your drawing and tattoo skills from a variety of top names. Guy Agenson, Michelle Wortman, Nico Hurtado, Sean Barber, Paul Booth, Mike DeVries, Nick Baxter, Russ Abbott, and Keith Ciaramello. It's pretty freaking amazing, huh? Wow! Yeah. 
Listen to what artists are saying about TattooEducation.com. In just one week, I lost 200 pounds. What? Thank you, TattooEducation.com. TattooEducation.com cured his impotence and saved our marriage. Thanks, TattooEducation.com. <laughs> The secrets and the subliminal messages which are hidden deep within all the material before the artwork is laid, whether it's audio or visual. TattooEducation.com TattooEducation.com So you're actually being brainwashed to be a better artist. This tattoo was done by an ordinary old tattooer. And this tattoo was done by the same artist after TattooEducation.com Just look at the difference! It's fucking amazing! You can collect the very best equipment on the market. You can have the brightest pigments out there, but if your drawing abilities are not up to par, ultimately, you're wasting your time. Log on now to TattooEducation.com. Here's to you and your career. This website is intended for professional tattoo artists only, or for apprentices who are learning in a supervised shop environment. None of the material here is meant to teach tattooing from scratch, but instead to teach how to draw or tattoo better and improve or broaden existing skills. If you're not a tattoo artist, there are some items here strictly about painting and other subjects that may be of interest to you. However, if you're wanting to learn the tattoo art form, you need to consult with your local professional studios before you start investing in books or equipment. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money and that's just stupid. Continuing education for the professional tattoo artist. All right, we're back. Marcus, we're live. We're back hey. with Marcus Leonard. Hey, Hi, Kelly. how are you? Very good. Long time no see. I'm glad she is staying because she always makes me giggle. <laughs> Excellent. Good. I'll yes. try not to. I'll be very stern. It is good. Oh, don't. We'll keep it light lighthearted. We don't need to be serious. All right. All right. No, I hope not. So, Marcus, thanks for joining us uh, and staying up a little late to talk to everybody here at Tattoo Now TV. Sure. No problem. Got nothing better to do. <laughs> I don't believe you. Seriously, I'm staying serious. I don't have anything better to do at the moment. This you're is staying fine. serious, but your hat makes you look like a duck. Or like a duck is trying to swallow your head. With no lower jaw. I know, they, they don't lower they beak. Can, uh, they can dislocate their lower jaws to swallow. It's a frustration. Yeah. yeah. All right, Marcus. They're not, they're, they're not snakes, Kelly. I'm... Not sure that checks nah. out. I'm not sure that checks out, but you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> All right, you... I lost the whole nipple thing, <laughs> and I just. Right, uh, that was what's hilarious. your what, What's your take so, on nipples, Marcus? I don't know. I don't know. I have never contemplated it. I don't have an opinion. I don't really have an opinion. What kind of nipples? There's. I can make. A, I can make an opinion right now. Just ask me something uh, about cat nipples. nipples. Go. I have never seen nor touched one. I have no opinion. More, normally they're covered by hair, mm. but you, the way you rendered them, they, no hair. Yeah. So I don't even know if it's accurate. I don't know. Do they look like that? Do they look like somebody sticking little pencils from inside the cat? They do. Out? I I have like a whole that? bunch of cats at home, and uh, that's <laughs> totally what their nipples look like. I don't care if that's sad. No, no, no. It's sad. It, it'd be sad if they'd be flaccid. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would look really sad. <laughs> like eight mini pigs <laughs> coming out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Let's get serious here a little bit. This, yeah, okay. Um, this conversation is taking a turn for the hilarious, and I love it. But we're gonna. people want to know a little bit about you. So... Uh, mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about your artistic influences and how that applies to your tattooing? Well, mm, this is so hard because I have been... Probably, normally, people would want to hear a lot of uh, uh, names of other tattooers right now, but I don't really go and look for that reason at tattoos anymore for, I think at least two or three years now. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, tattooers. I mean, what art-wise, art uh, you know, there's, anything, really. What inspires you? What inspires me is more people and uh, an approach to something that 
than anything visually that I look at art wise if I look out if I go out on a on a on a bike ride or whatever on a walk with a dog I see a lot of things yeah I'm very visual guy so I I just I look at nature and I see a thing and then I look at that thing closer and then I I start thinking about it and I just it just keeps me busy in my head I guess and then I'm getting all kinds of ideas off of that and uh, if I look at art then I'm normally analyzing completely different things and it all goes into my process but I don't know who I'm looking at specifically because I don't really look at it that way I just look at everything that that I see sure and that's art that's outside that's real life things that's uh, uh, any random photo of the internet anything basically um, what I what I love looking at is specifically concept art I think because these um, they, they approach the whole design aspect uh, more than the art aspect and I think that for tattoos this is way more important than to make it look all artsy or very special personal touch or, or something like what an artist can give to something I think it's most important that that fucking thing looks good yeah, absolutely <laughs> it's well well designed yeah, it doesn't matter to me if the if the light source is absolutely picture perfect, if it makes it look shittier, because in nature, sometimes a light source can make something look really shitty if you don't adjust it the way you as a designer want it. So I just, you know, sometimes it's unrealistic. It, it looks better than if it would be more realistic. So bam, my decision is made really, really fast there. It's always design first and um, I don't I don't see like my my clients too I don't really see them as uh, as canvases so well, we're still at the first question I think I totally ran no that's, that. that's exactly the kind of answers that we love <laughs> with big big long right, long okay. answers um, good 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 so how do you keep how do you keep it fresh how do you keep evolving and and keep from doing you know getting stuck in the same kind of thing how do you keep it new um basically because i work like one one tattoo in a week <laughs> as in other people they do one a day or two a day even and, and work on that so i i basically i keep it to one big project per week if even that uh, so my output is basically just not so big that I could burn myself out with it, which is also the reason why I'm doing it this, this way. Yeah, so um, I'm just coming up with little small ideas here and there, and then I just build them out into a really big project. And sometimes that's enough. Sometimes one little idea is enough to make something, you know, stand out and new a little bit more than anything else. You don't get that chance on a, on a very small tattoo to go all kinds of different directions with it and that really just inspires me and in, in that that makes me feel good yeah to, to look at a finished piece that you did in a very short time frame it's big and it's massive and you look at it and you go like right we did that nice thank you you know and if you have that often enough and if you have enough time in between those moments to actually um, filter all that and let it sink in and you're a happy person you know if that's your job, you're a happy person. So that's that's all the motivation I need, cool. basically. Uh, I've got I've got some questions from the folks that are watching. Um, so they might seem <laughs> a little random, but uh, we got one person out there that wants to know if you plan on visiting the UK anytime soon. Nope. <laughs> all right, we'll keep it at that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So immediate. Oh, sorry. It's not like the, no, the whole thing because I just that's that's really there's at the moment really only one constant goal that I have been going to to actually go there and tattoo people, and that's been the states because I have the most attention in the states. Most people know me there actually, and uh, I I just love going there. Yeah, and uh, so that's basically the only spot, and there's only 
a few spots in the states that I would go to. So. Okay. And then starting new pieces there is a is a problem for me. Yeah, because I'm really really stiff German bastard. <laughs> I just I, I just really don't <laughs> I really don't like working out of my comfort zone if I'm starting something new because my my whole process is so horribly slow and 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 cramped up that I just need things to be the way they are. I just can't replicate that somewhere else. So if I have customers that have pieces that are uh, in progress, I'm totally going to work on that in the States, but I'm not going to start new pieces even there. So uh, understand. all these traveling questions are basically obsolete. Um, we got another person would like to know is, uh, do you work from computer when you're, when you're laying out tattoo designs? Are you doing it all on a computer? I'm basically doing almost everything paper free. Yes, the only the only time when I use paper is when I'm getting my sketches off the body and or my measurements basically and when I'm getting the stencil on the body. That's the only time when I use paper. The whole in between process I just cut it out. Do you use the what are you using for tools? Uh you use like a ZBrush or what what are you using to draw with? No, I I had I had my ADD was totally not buying the ZBrush idea. I have no patience for that. <laughs> I don't know what a ZBrush is. <laughs> uh, somebody else wants somebody else to? wants to know uh, if you have background in graphic design. Like, where did you start with your art? Mm. Basically, with tattooing, I think. I mean, I've been always drawing here and there a little bit, but. You couldn't really take that seriously until I took it seriously and really want, knew what I'm going to go and do with it. So that's when I started really sketching, drawing, and making a little portfolio so I can uh, have an apprenticeship. That was basically, and that's when I really started drawing um, when I needed to. Um, other than that, I have no education Period. I have no education. <laughs> That's basically what it is. Other than my own, it's true. I have I have nothing, man. <laughs> I have only this, and I think that's why I kind of try and make it work too. <laughs> I think you're making it work very very well. A stiff German bastard with no education. The Marcus Leonard story. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> a great you. start of your biography. Nice. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you can't even comprehend how immediately exhausted I am if I have to think about writing a, a, a whole book. <laughs> that just is insane to me. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, and yet, I'm tattooing like a complete full sleeve, you know. So I guess whatever you like. Do you uh, you have any advice for uh, aspiring collectors and uh, how they can go out and get a really good tattoo? Like what? the process they should go through? Um, that's the first thing, I think, that none of those people normally have is patience. Uh, and that's really the most important thing. If you have that, everything else sorts itself out, man. I mean, if you start from there, around patience, the first thing that comes to mind is, all right, I'm not going to go around the corner and get the first best tattoo artist to scratch something into my arm. Um, you know, then, then you're down to luck, to plain luck to get something nice, yeah? or you just patience, you don't, saving money takes time. You know, if you don't save enough money, you might end up with something that is a compromise com as well, you know, and uh, it, it's all patience. If you're a patient person, or if you can just get yourself being patient, then it's just gonna be fine. Yeah. And uh, would you that's agree? probably the best advice. Just one I word. I would. I would absolutely agree. People. People seem to be okay. showing more. <laughs> people seem to be showing more patience nowadays. Like when trying to choose somebody and really putting forth the effort into like making sure. They're stepping off on the right foot to getting like the best possible tattoo they can, rather than just like oh, I think I want a tattoo of something and uh, there's a guy. Like a lot of people start off that way, mm -hmm. get, just getting 
Most. whatever. Yes, they do. Most. I've got tribal to attest to that. Mm. Uh-huh. So do we all. <laughs> I have an upside down heart. I think heart. the tours are getting it's better. It's amazing. The start of a sleeve. Um, <laughs> I think I think most tattooers are not very patient people. You know, um, I would I would just toss that in there. Uh, I I don't know. I here and this is probably what fascinates me about Guy Acheson that much because it's probably the only tattooer that I know that actually has patience, like real real dedicated patience. That's just fascinating to me. Um, I don't have that at all. And uh, I, I just need to make the right steps into the right direction always because every side job just irritates the shit out of me. I so. think I think a I'm I'm a horrible <laughs> client. That's what I'm trying to say. I think a great part of art is that uh, you can basically just take all of your own personal failures and combine them into something that that works. Like. You know, yeah. oh, I'm late for everything. I'm going to make that endearing. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm such an artist. Look at me. Doesn't that make me something? Um, no, I, I, you're absolutely right. There's nothing that's expected from us other than to make something look good forever. You know, I think that's enough to, to ask of somebody. And uh, all the other, I mean... If, yeah, some some p personal hygiene is pro <laughs> probably not so bad, but you know, as a tattooer, um, you can basically do whatever the fuck you want. I think that's also why most people just think that's exactly right for me. It's also very confusing <laughs> if you're just allowed to do anything, you know. So, as long as you smell good. That take. Like, I don't. Uh... I don't mostly. I don't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can't help you then. It's but you no, I know. I know, that's me. But I have something to work on, you know? I always keep myself a little busy, you know, with things other than design. Sometimes you just need to work on your BO. <laughs> <laughs> After, it's true, you know? Nobody tells you. This is the stupidest thing in social contract. If that you let it go long enough, someone will tell you. Oh, I did a couple of times, you know? And after that, people immediately tell me. <laughs> <laughs> because that's when I broke it all right and now fucking hell breaks loose you know well so. Marcus thank you for joining us and sharing all your insight uh, about BO and uh, beyond it was a total joke I, I don't smell man I, I didn't just, believe you I was gonna I was I was getting there so I'm, I'm glad <laughs> I did um, but th this was not really that contributing to the whole art and tattooing stuff. I'm sorry. I, I'll stick around. <laughs> it was definitely <laughs> insightful, and uh, maybe we'll get back to you when we do a little group discussion. Uh, we'll talk about some other stuff. Okay. Um, okay, thanks cool. For, uh, thanks for talking with us. Thanks. Bye.
And we're back with Gunner. Hey, good. How's it good, going? how are you? Good, good. Hopefully this is working better now. You look amazing. It's delightful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you too. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So uh, we want to talk a little bit about what you've been doing recently um, as far as some of your painting and stuff. Um, have you, uh, you, you have a recent gallery show, I've been told? Yeah, I just had a show down at uh, Jesse Smith's uh, gallery down in Richmond, Virginia, um, which was really fun. I had a great time going down and seeing those guys down there. So good, it was a good time, a good collective of uh, what's considered new school artists, I guess. So it was a really neat, really neat uh, event for me because I got to see a lot of the kids who kind of came up a little later than when I started, but are like kind of influencing what I'm doing now. So oh, that was fun. Uh, awesome. Um, so painting versus tattooing um, as a creative outlet, which do you prefer one or the other? What are the you know the benefits for you to uh, painting versus tattooing? You know, I don't know. It's apples and oranges, I guess, because they're two different like completely two different processes for me when I paint I'm painting for myself I don't um, take on a lot of commission projects and I'm painting personal stuff like stuff that I I personally would want to see and when I do tattoos I'm tattooing for others because tattooing to me is a service industry uh, so my job is to make my clients happy um, so sometimes my voice isn't really in my work uh, in my tattoos as much as it is in my paintings I guess, I guess that's probably the so biggest difference. Painting may be a little bit more personally fulfilling, I suppose. Uh, painting is fu is fully, yeah, it's really, um, yeah, it, it's a good outlet for me. It, it's really cathartic. Uh, but tattooing is like how I got my start in art, and so tattooing is equally as important to me. It's just two different mediums completely, like for me, uh, mentally and, and artistically. So can you so. tell us a little bit about this uh, Pinocchio Moby Dick painting that you did? You know, yeah, I got really into nautical art. Like, I'm a huge fan of, I'm actually probably the biggest fan of landscape painters um, from the Hudson River School period. Uh, and then I'd come across another school out of, uh, I believe it's uh, somewhere in England um, that was a nautical school of art um, back in the Victorian era. And um, it kind of influenced some of the stuff I was you know, looking at and, and really admiring. And then I have a, I come from kind of a lowbrow, um, I guess, uh, or what they're calling um, surreal, the, the modern surrealism or um, type of art. And so there's that cartoon element that shows up in my work. And so I kind of was trying to uh, do a little hybrid with those. And the Pinocchio thing, I don't pre-plan a lot of my paintings. A lot of them just, I just draw on the canvas with paint and then I paint. There's no pre-planning uh, as like with a tattoo, there's a lot of pre-planning. Um, and so the whale just kind of came and then I had the idea of this like whale of a tail where there's these stories that, you know, like Pinocchio or Moby Dick or Jonah and the whale, um, they, or about Jonah and the fish, I guess they don't really call it a whale, but these big fish tails. And uh, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to just put them together in one giant albino whale it's, painting. It's a really cool painting. I dig it a I lot. I love that that's, painting that's, so that's really much. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely been one of the, like, probably the more popular pieces I've done. So that's kind of neat, but it's hard for me. People want to see more of that, and my brain doesn't work. I can't repeat. Like, I just am always moving forward. I don't really do a lot of regurgitating imagery too much. So the little kids kind of burned me out on regurgitating uh, imagery. Yeah, I, so. I can understand that. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> so with the sea captain painting that you did, the I noticed he's got a little uh, little anchor tattoo. Was that was that always yeah. planned in there? I know you said you don't really plan it out, but was was that added at the end, or was it kind of in the middle? Like, was it... you know, well, honestly, the whole painting kind of just came together uh, through various stages, and and really were kind of dependent on some of the art I was looking at um, when he first. Started, when I first started that painting, I was kind of looking at a lot of the work from Rembrandt and uh, Giuseppe Ribera and, um, and uh, 
Peter Paul Rubens. And so he kind of became an amalgamation of those um, type of styles. And then the other things I just wanted to add my own voice to, because I'm really trying to like learn the pro- this process of painting. Um, as much as you know, I'm getting to do the shows and stuff, it's just oil painting is really, really like, like a lot like tattooing in that if you don't know the history and you don't know the like true technicalities of it, um, you, you're really going to mess up the painting. I mean, it'll get fucked up over time. Like, uh, much like doing a, a bad tattoo, not using proper techniques, if you do a poor oil painting and you're not following kind of some rules, it'll fall apart in a few years. And so um, this, is, this has all been kind of a learning process for myself too. So if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, definitely. It sounds like it's been a good artistic journey so far. Yeah, it's, it's really fun, and it's, it's really changed the way I tattoo uh, in the fact that I've kind of over time gone back into a more of a traditional approach to tattooing, really trying to separate myself artistically um, in that I try to make paintings paintings and tattoos tattoos uh, based on the longevity aspect of that as well, um, looking at the technicalities and, and how stuff's going to hold up over time. So it's kind of funny because a lot of painters uh, or a lot of people like they want to see tattoos approached more painterly, and I'm trying to approach tattoos more tattoo, uh, you know, traditional style, I guess. If, um, well, just trying to get that longevity in both of my, both, you know, arenas. It shows. It's, it's the, uh, your, your most recent tattoos definitely show a, a more heavy use of, like, you know, solid colors, like nice, bold outlines, something that's going to last for a long time. They look great. How's oh, everything you. at Red Tree? You're out there with uh, with Derb out in Ohio. Ah, uh, yeah, it's awesome out there. It's um, you know, I've gotten to work at some really great shops. Uh, Art Junkies being one of the last like of my favorite shops. Um, but this is this has been an awesome experience because we really I think it's just a, more of an adult shop. Um, we've all been doing this long enough to kind of just be comfortable in our own environments. And so we work together really well. Um, and it's, you know, it's a really inspirational shop. Everybody's trying to push, push themselves to new levels. And that, that's really important for me to be around. Um, I don't like people that, I don't, I don't really like working around people that are stagnant and don't have goals or aspirations. Um, and this shop is definitely goal oriented. It's, it's an employment only shop, right? You guys don't, you don't have, you don't do any walk-in stuff there or anything, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't even really have a sign or anything. You really kind of got to know someone to get in. It's pretty, I don't say it's like uh, elitist, but it's definitely, we're trying to not be like a straight street shop and kind of be able to focus on what we're doing and not be interrupted by the daily um, hustle and bustle of like a normal shop, so, I guess. So the door is locked all the time. You have to kind of know, you know, have something set up to even get in really. It must so. be nice to have, uh, to be able to focus like, you know, on your on your work, but not you know not having to deal with that kind of extraneous stuff. It's important, especially like um, you know, I was just watching that Marcus interview, and I, I really admire that guy as an artist as well as uh, Kelly. But listening to him talk about ADD, and you know, that really is the artist's way. And I don't know if it's intentional or really like a disease, but it seems that there's always a difficulty in focus, and. You know, sometimes working like conventions or busy street shops, you're coming in and out of focus all the time and not really getting to devote yourself to a client the way you um, probably should be. Uh, whereas like a, you know, a nice quiet shop works out really well because it's just you and them for the most part and, and all your attention is given directly to them, uh, which is what I think clients deserve, you know, to get the best piece is they deserve your full attention. Uh, speaking of conventions, are you going to be, uh, in the coming year, are you going to be hitting up any conventions? Yeah, i got a bunch of shows, actually. Um, I'm doing the Best in the Midwest and the Detroit Motor City uh, show in February. And then we're doing Health City again, uh, which I'm really excited about. Wes Abbott and I are teaming up to do a seminar together. Um, so that's going to be really fun for me because I'm a huge like fan of Russ, as a, not just as an artist, but as a person. Uh, he's like, a, like Kelly said, he's a plethora of knowledge, and so I think it's going to be like, I think it's going to be an amazing uh, time for both of us to, to get to have this opportunity to work together like this. I keep so. hearing about that seminar oh. at work too, and it's painful 
to like hear all the cool stuff about it. I'm like, I want to go to it. So it's what? What's the uh, what's the focus of the seminar? You know, I guess I I kind of started focusing on a seminar myself the last uh, couple of years, um, having to been like. Uh, to get out, you know, in a personal spot, I guess. But I went through like some some moments of, um, I guess, low self-esteem in, as an artist and some self-doubts, and, and started experimenting a lot and really like kind of lost myself in my career. And when I refocused, I kind of wanted to do a seminar based on the refocus. Like, what got me um, kind of started in tattooing, and what made me have that drive, and what made my tattoos stand out when other people's maybe weren't standing out like what helped me build my career and so i kind of started focusing on a seminar about for that that's what my personal seminar is about um some of the the things i've learned along the along my route as an artist you know doing this for almost 20 years now and when russ and i russ is like i said he's a an amazing uh, fountain of knowledge and so when him and i started talking about art and uh you know he had helped me out with some st- some stuff um, we discussed maybe doing something together that kind of helps kids focus on how to bring art, artistic elements into tattooing properly, um, because sometimes that stuff gets lost in translation. Um, I think you could be a great artist and not a great tattoo artist, and Russ and I are kind of trying to bridge that gap a little. And then with all these people giving, giving these kids who are coming into the industry a lot of shit about, like, the fact that they're tracing or they're you know they're hacks and they're not smart and they're not respectful someone's got to teach them like someone has to teach them to be respectful because they haven't learned it like they're learning from apprentices basically and so uh, you know we decided it was time that like maybe we give help them out you know and instead of bitching about the problem we try and do something to fix it and so it's really like a you know truly educational seminar in regards to how do we um, get these kids to a level where they not only are, are artistically better tattoo artists, but also more respectful of where uh, tattooing is and where it's going. That's, it sounds like so. it's going to be a really, really good one. <laughs> it sounds great. It's, it, you know, it's one of those things that we thought was just important. It's something that's being, you know, you see people tap into it here and there, but it's something that's highly missed right now. And I, I don't know, I just am kind of over bitching about stuff. I, you know, I used to do a lot of ranting and bitching, and now I'm kind of in the place where I'd rather just start doing some repairing like help helping out these guys come up and um, I'm not going to be able to tattoo forever but I'd really like to have an impact on on where tattooing goes even after I'm done tattooing so well thanks for uh, sharing all your insight Uh, are you going to stick around with us for a little while and uh, maybe do some group discussions with us later yeah that'd be wonderful Uh, so so we'll talk to you in just a little bit okay sounds great talk to you soon Definitely uh, being immersed in the community, having at least some involvement with other uh, artists is a, is a big part of it. You'll, you'll stay a lot fresher that way by yourself. Definitely uh, being immersed in the community, having at least some involvement with other uh, artists is a, is a big part of it. You'll, you'll stay a lot fresher that way by yourself. You know, sometimes you hear these artists saying, oh, I don't, I don't have any influences. And if that was true, your uh, stuff would look like the paintings in uh, those caves in France that were done 40,000 years ago. That's what art with no influences looks like. My doctors have told me what Guy just said about helping your eyes. you got to focus something distant and take breaks and stretching. You immediately have to start developing good habits. If you don't 
for instance, develop good posture, your back is going to go on you in your first two years. Having artistic experiences not related to tattooing and then taking that energy and that inspiration and bringing it back into tattooing. I think subconsciously, as an artist, you keep your eyes and ears open and you don't even know you're doing it. And I think that's what those guys were kind of saying. And then when you sit down at the, at, at the drawing table, you sit down at your, uh, your, your tattoo station, things come to you without even thinking, without even trying. You gotta keep drawing. But I would just say, um, draw alive, draw, paint. Love what you do. Get out there. You know, get yourself knowledgeable about what you do, what you love, and uh, really like put the effort of putting that time in to draw. And I uh, tattoo as much as I can. mental focus all right gentlemen we're back okay everybody hear me okay mm -hmm. yeah all right is that working for me I th uh your audio is there and we just got a still image which which will be uh maybe can i can you call me right back and then i'll hit it up on the other device yeah sure we'll try to do that okay thanks uh marcus we're gonna stick with you yeah and kelly all right and what we're, we're gonna run through some uh Tattoo images and just kind of discuss what we see. Uh, it'll show up on your screen. Hey, there's Gunner. Yay. Get back. back. Uh, hold on, we lost Mark. <laughs> All right. We're going to get everybody together here. Yeah. Uh, whoop. What? It's not a, guys are not having a bad trip. It's, there we go. All right. We, Oops. Can everybody hear everybody? Yeah, I got no visual, though. I'm just going to go to your site. Uh, okay. Excellent. Yeah, I hear everybody. Too, so. Okay, excellent. Uh, we're just going to run through some of these tattoos of the day. They come from the uh, the tattoo uh, tattoo of the day app that you can get at the app store, and uh, we'll just take a look at some tattoos. Talk about tattooing. Just kind of uh, yeah. All right, cool. We're just going to work out the little technical parts. There we go. Just keep Is this working now? Ah, uh, yeah, I just, you know, the resolution on that for me is so bad. I'm just going to try and run the feed, the live feed parallel to this so I can actually see what's going on. Okay. So it's up to you, okay. Kelly. Well. Yeah, that's what I had to do, too. While you guys are doing that, I'll take a look at this tattoo. Um, so this, I really, okay, I really like the, the bizarre color choices. I feel like they're not... You know, it's it's obviously an Asian-inspired tattoo, but at the same time, like, you know, they went out of their way to to choose non-traditional color choices and give some interesting, like, light sources. I There's a lot that. of stuff going on with that tattoo. Right now. It's a lot to look at, yeah. Um, who did this? This is done by Litos. Okay. Uh, from uh, Forbidden Images Tattoo. Uh-huh, okay. Well, there's there's a lot of things I like. There's a lot of things I don't like. I just keep it to the things I like. Cool. All right. Awesome. Uh, it's gone. Okay. Now I <laughs> I have no mental image left. All right. I can't talk about it anymore. How about this How about this lovely flying squirrel tattoo? I love the shit out of this tattoo. <laughs> this is amazing, but it doesn't have the nipples. <laughs> it would have added a lot. The nipples would definitely... That would be so amazing. Uh, this is done... They could be standing away from 
from where the air hits the body. Well, that would... <laughs> so it would there would be like an X. Well, that's the thing. That it would make it less it aerodynamic. Amazing. If it had nipples yes. just breaking through the wind, it would probably whistle like as it flew towards you. Dude, like like a huge tank is not super aerodynamic. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and with that thing with nipples. Pretty nipples awesome. can be added to anything to make I like it better, it. I think. I like I like the tattoo. I, I just I stop stop the bullshitting. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like the tattoo. I just think there could be a little bit more black. There, I said it. Okay. I think the color choice is d despite the lack of black, I really, really like the limited color palette. Like well, you know, blue and yeah. brown. Yeah, that's what I like about it too. Striking. There's some black. This is that's proper black. That's, a, that's yes. a lot of black there. I love it. It's a lot of shapes too. I really like it. Normally, I might not like this much black, but I think for the subject matter, it it, it just works so perfectly. I I think it's a lovely tattoo. But the the crowning achievement is truly the fact that his underwear says alpha male, and he has a tattoo <laughs> of a girl in bondage. And I appreciate that attention to detail. That is. I want to see the underwear now. <laughs> All right, is it? we'll show you that. There you go. Oh, good. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> I can't there wait. it is. I don't there, see it's it. It's right there. Look. Ah, here we are. It takes a little. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Uh, it really says alpha. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought you did, you did something totally witty there by just. <laughs> seeing an alpha male by the brand or the color or something and now it really just says alpha yeah um, it's a little disappointing <laughs> a little disappointed well <laughs> i i really like the how it's how it's mostly shapes normally i don't like humans tattooed on humans but those shapes are really pulling that thing off i think what works so well for it is it has such a such a strong light source and such a strong you know black versus light that it's really it's creating more interesting shapes really than just being a yeah. human form it's it's about the shapes yeah it's striking yeah it's it's broken up into those in, exactly yeah it's very striking okay uh, next one up is a uh, bart andrews piece like demon and snakes uh -huh. um, can you see that marcus yeah i can see it yeah, now, now I can see it. Um, it's such a weird yeah. green. I love. I I really like that green. It's not the same green that you see all the time, and I appreciate uh, that there's such a large <laughs> field of a weird color. The the color is indeed yeah. That's because it's such a big piece. I think it really works because you can't look at all of it unless you're very far away. On a smaller piece, I'd say there's too much, but I'm a fan of uh, of really minimized palettes, so that's very preferential. It's not really a critique. Mm. Um, I like the overall shape of it. It's nice. It's pretty balanced. That's ah, a good piece. Yeah. Like the water too. The water is okay. So this next one is uh, Jeff. Uh, Ensminger, Pelican. Yeah, that's absolutely lovely. And there's a nipple in there for you. Yeah, there's a there's actual nipple in that shot. Finally. Yeah, it's got a, a chest protrusion. <laughs> I feel like even animals that might not necessarily have nipples in real life should be given nipples through the the art of tattoo. <laughs> oh god. Uh <laughs> We'll see. we'll save time for that. <laughs> so, all right. So this next tattoo, this is a Montalvo tattoo. This is destined to hold up pretty well over time. Yeah. This one is really mm -hmm. solid. John Montalvo. John Montalvo. Yeah, this is lovely. Yeah, this.
I really love the marriage of like you know traditional but new and he he does it so well It's so bold and it's so simple that the the tiniest little screw up, the tiniest little thing that might be off a little bit, there's just no room for error. You you have to have it spot on, otherwise everyone's gonna see it. Bright orange koi. This is uh, Brendan. Some name I can't pronounce. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I think what I like best about this is the water, actually, because it's just lovely. Yeah. It's nice and, and curly, and it, it's it's not over shaded. It's it's pretty good, you know. There's a few little inconsistencies in the finger waves, but I'm not even gonna go there. It's nitpicking. I, f it's I feel like water is often neglected when when people think about like koi tattoos or just anything that has water in general. It's kind of an afterthought when really it's it's the thing that's probably gonna tie everything together. Dude, water. Anyways, if you can draw. A good-looking, flowing Japanese water wave. You can draw feathers, fire, biomac, scales. All of a sudden, you can draw a thousand things and understood three or four of the most important rules that about flow. You know, um, it's the bee's knees is what water. Kittens' whiskers, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whiskers. You can draw whiskers then. <laughs> so we're gonna skip. Another we're going to skip to the last tattoo, and we're going to wrap it up. We're kind of running out of time, and we still have to get to Guy Aitchison's uh, intro to his bio encyclopedia. So uh, if you guys have any last words you want, to, uh, you want to share with our audience, that would be great. And then we're going to get to the Guy Aitchison interview. Okay. So here it is, uh -oh. the last tattoo of the day. Um, yeah. Lots of detail. Amazing. Yeah. Um, especially in the eye, the whole cornea thing. This is somebody who understands focus <laughs> and noodling away on a tiny surface. This is also this, this is hours. also a Lido's piece. Uh, yeah. He, he, yeah, yeah. This is this is all good. You know, this is, this is pretty nice. Um, the attention to detail yeah. is so meticulous. It's really this this tattoo looks almost like masturbation. Where like he just got into the details yeah. and like just loved every part of it, and now mm. I've really cultivated a horrible image by referencing masturbation. I'm sorry. That's a heck of a way to, to wrap <laughs> up your time with us, Kelly. <laughs> so, Marcus, thank you for being with us. Kelly, thank you for being. Thank it's you. It's been great talking with you guys. Uh, thank you. And uh, hopefully, we can do it again sometime. We'll have we'll have you back if you want. All right, so. All right we're. Uh, we're out. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna take a look at Guy Aitchison's intro to his uh, bio encyclopedia, and he's gonna talk a little bit about his upcoming webinar. Uh, stick with us. It's gonna be uh, pretty cool. You've got the uh, bio encyclopedia coming up. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Well, I mean, we say coming up. Uh, you know, it's it's not on a production schedule right now. I'm still working through a lot of the. Uh, final layout stuff but uh, juggling a lot of things so yeah what you're seeing right now are pieces that were done uh, uh, online collaborations um, like that uh, coil there was started by uh, Marco Velazquez from Chicago uh, Dan Hazelton has worked on that I've worked on it uh, there may have been some others involved as well you'll see uh, exactly who worked on each of them when, uh, when the book comes out um, but we did hundreds of these pieces. That's why I couldn't really tell you off the top of my head that one. Uh, I know I was involved in Thad Minnick, 
uh, Dan Hazelton. Dan was involved in a ton of them. Um, but anyway, this book is going to be a f hundreds of designs. Uh, you know, a lot of them sleeves or, or stuff that can be broken down and, and you know, re redesigned to fit any body part. Uh, we're encouraging people to take this stuff and mix and match it and make it theirs, do their own thing with it, color it how they want it. Some uh, were including multiple different versions or some are only rough sketches you know, with a lot of room to move but there's tons of material and uh, you know about a hundred pages of just theory and uh, you know things that you can do to ensure that your biomech designs or any kind of abstract flowing kind of designs are going to fit the body as well as possible and read clearly and uh, you know hold them nicely when seen from a distance to, to be you know flattering to the body part uh, exaggerating the musculature, you know, doing all that stuff the right way. So, uh, yeah, the book's a monster. It's probably going to be uh, close to 500 pages, 10 by 13 inch format. Here you're seeing some different stages of, uh, of a drawing that Don McDonald and I did. You can pass that one back and forth. Uh, this, these are the final two stages. And in this image here, where uh, Don had just gone through with colored pencil and uh, white acrylic paint and the left hand an image and uh, you can see uh, in the right side there's some subtle tweaks that were done to it uh, in Photoshop uh, and in earlier stages you can see where we started with a rough sketch done and done and uh, you know, then I had lightened it in Photoshop to a point where it was very faint and reprinted it and then uh, drew it in my own hand kind of uh, changed some things uh, uh, kept others the same so uh, all of these designs went through all kinds of different stages. There were not really no rules other than to, you know, try to work with these uh, these images uh, to find the parts of them that you thought were the most interesting and, and run with those. Do your thing with it. How how long have you been working on this project? Oh gosh, I'm I couldn't tell you. I think it's been close to three years, um, maybe even longer. Um, we started by having a group of these artists, uh, about a, a dozen of them, uh, came out here uh, to our, our stead here in the, in the Midwest and uh, we just sat and art jammed for a few days and um, the rest of it is all had, had to happen online but we got off to a really good start there. We did a little bit of drawing together at a couple of conventions as well. Uh, but most of this has all been, uh, you know, stuff we, we posted on Flickr. We created a, a private Flickr gallery where we could uh, post things and, uh, you know, comments and things like that. And uh, for a, a while there, a good year and a half or so, uh, we were all very active uh, in this project. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was great to, you know, wake up in the morning and over coffee, uh, you know, get out the phone and look at the stuff that was posted, uh, you know, what was done to, to who's drawing and, you know, if... if one of them seemed like the kind of thing you'd want to hop on next. So, uh, yeah, this is the result of that. It was a really uh, unusual 21st century type of project, you know, where uh, before Flickr and that sort of thing, it would have been very difficult for artists to work together in a group like this uh, over such an extended period of time. But, you know, because of the uh, Internet, we were able yeah, to. Yeah, it's really uh, the collaboration that's... Uh that you can do with the internet it's great you, instead of having to mail things back and forth and or actually meet in person it's that's pretty cool and this was this inspired by uh, the tattoo education kind of stuff like kind of showing people uh, what what they can do and providing them with some sort of jumping off point for their own creativity oh gosh it's ser serving a lot of purposes I mean a lot of it is just because right now feels like the right time to be doing this um, in terms of, you know, I mean, Biomech obviously has been around for a while, you know, 20 some odd years, but it seems to be going through a renaissance right now with a, a number of uh, really good artists who are taking it seriously and, uh, and putting some really nice original twists on it. And that's very exciting. I'm, uh, I'm very happy to have been able to work with a lot of these artists and, and kind of soak up some of their energy. Um, and the stuff that we did, I really feel is. Uh, work that uh, doesn't really have any one person's signature on it at all. So that's a great example of how technology can uh, kind of further the, the artistic expression and kind of change the landscape of uh, what, what you can do out there. Um, you've got an upcoming webinar, January 20th. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what, uh, what that's all about? 
Well, I'm trying to be really kind of general with this one in terms of uh, I'm going in with the goal of just trying to show as much as possible. Um, but it's specifically going to be, you know, the the tricks that I've picked up through the years. I'm going to just try to talk about everything I uh, think of as I'm working. Uh, in the process of doing that, we're going to have uh, questions that people can submit uh, via the, the chat that will be attached to this. And uh, Gabe will ask us these questions while, uh, while I'm working, and uh, we'll be able to go over all these subjects. Uh, if I make a comment on something that I do and one of you finds it interesting, but uh, isn't sure uh, about one particular aspect of it or whatever, whatever you could uh, actually directly ask me then and there. And um, I'm basically just aiming to make this as useful as possible. I want to pack it with information. Uh, the camera will be up tight on the tattoo. There'll be a secondary uh, uh, camera on the palette. So you can see the sort of rinsing and dipping between colors sort of painterly stuff that, uh, that you can do. Um, and this will be going for uh, you know, three, four hours. Um, I'm going to not show you the whole setup, but uh, I'm definitely going to talk you through my color choice and things like that. And, um, this, uh, this, this is kind of an unprecedented kind of uh, access to an artist that a lot of folks would never get a chance to, to have. Uh, I know in the past in tattooing, it was kind of a closed door kind of thing. And uh, you're doing exactly the opposite with this. And uh, it's really good to see that shift in the tattoo industry that people are actually willing to share techniques and make the art better as a whole. Well, you know, this is a, this is a natural extension of the direction that is uh, kind of happening in general with uh, conventions, uh, having seminars and uh, workshops and things like that, uh, with artists willingly opening up uh, in those kinds of formats where they know that it's professionals and their apprentices that are sitting on these, uh, these classes. Um, so it's, it, it's continued, you know, to, to get more and more open and more and more uh, specialized in terms of the, the kind of information that you can, uh, you know, learn through uh, the different seminars and, and new DVDs and books that are being put out. I'm really impressed, for instance, with the, uh, the one that Bez just put out, Design Through Chaos. Uh, I was really blown away by that. He's showing some very 21st century sticks, uh, uh, tr uh, tricks, which might seem a little far out at first, but then you think about it. These are incredibly useful tools. I mean, you can you can uh, explore different options of design layout, uh, bam, 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 like one variation after the other very quickly and see them actually laid out in 3D on the human body uh, without a lot of technical hassle. It's um, something that all of us, you know, could really benefit from, and uh, I think it's only a matter of time before we see more and more artists, uh, you know, taking on these kinds of new tools. I mean, Photoshop has now become very standard for many tattoo artists. It, you know, it, at one point was this very specialized graphic editing program, and now it's just part of the toolkit of any uh, serious artist who wants to be able to. Uh, you know, play around with their own designs just that much more. See, uh, you know, what if I put this over here instead of over there? Or, you know, this all looks great, but I would like to make this element a little bit larger and uh, not have to redraw the whole thing. If, if someone is interested in, uh, in taking part in this web seminar, what's the best way for them to uh, buy into this? Where, where can they find it? Well, we, we are selling tickets at tattooeducation.com. Uh, uh, if you uh, click on catalog and then uh, scroll down, you'll see event tickets for this and other classes that are being put on by some other artists and you know photographer uh, Bill DeMichael and uh, a number of other people uh, over the next few months. Uh, definitely uh, worth checking out the catalog we have uh, at the site in general. Uh, we've got a lot of great books, DVDs. Um, great gift items, things like that. Uh, we're still able to guarantee shipping for on, uh, in time for Christmas on anything that we get before the 16th. Awesome. So there's there's our shtick. <laughs> Good plug. And uh, I'm looking forward to tattooing you, Ben. This is going to be a fun project. I've got a good picture in my head. I think you're going to love I'm it. I'm really looking forward uh, to it, too. It's going to be a nice road trip with Gabe, and uh, I think uh, it's going to be a really good experience for everybody. Um, thanks for talking with us. I really appreciate your sure appreciate thing. your time. Uh, I know you're. Thanks, to Emily, for letting me step away from her, her tattoo to do yeah. this.
I'm going to go tattoo a bunch of gear. Awesome. Now. And uh, so, bye, yeah. everyone. We'll talk, talk to you today. soon. Thanks, guy. Great, guys. Cheers. All right, welcome to Tattoo Now TV. This is going to be weird. I'm not going to know when to talk. You can move this way. I'm going to shout over at you. Okay. Point it at you so you can see yourself. Got it. Come down. Okay, I'm back. Hey, we're back. Uh, but we're not here. We're somewhere else now. We're at Luthier's Co op. Uh, thanks for checking out the show. Now you can check out some music. Uh, if you guys want to sponsor the show, get in touch with us at tattoo now at tattoo now.com. Thanks, Kelly Doty, Marcus Leonard, everybody.